favorite part, the battery. I think this is the largest battery of any phone I've reviewed. I stress tested it with a weekend drive from upstate Roxbury back to Brooklyn, a trek of about 160 miles. I used turn-by-turn -turn directions for almost six straight hours, with pit stops along the way to see roadside rocket ships, lean on the occasional tugboat propeller, and get to know the local wildlife. R.I.P. Add in two hours streaming podcasts over Bluetooth, another two and a half hours rocking on Spotify, and for an hour in the backwoods, we had no cell service at all. Despite that, I still had enough power for 90 minutes of Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube on the couch when I got home. That's what I call heavy use, and the Ultra lives up to its name here. A quick word on charging, I've given Samsung guff for including only a 25 watt plug in the box, instead of the 45 watt charger sold separately. But thanks to Sasha Segan at PC Mag, we now know that you should save your 50 bucks. There's almost no benefit in speed to the more expensive charger. And now this is important. For that battery test, I left the phone in its default settings, with the display resolution limited to full HD and the refresh rate locked to 60 hertz. Now personally, that's probably where I'd leave those settings. I've never been great at noticing super high resolution displays, and even the scrolling smoothness is subtle. But when you're spending as much as this thing costs for the kind of specs that this thing boasts, leaving those toggles in the out-of-box setting just I don't know, it's kind of like buying a professional racing bike and then bolting training wheels to it. If you do run the phone at 120 hertz or quad HD, you'll see a battery handicap of between 20 and 30 percent, according to my buddy Android Martinick at Andrew Central. All the way down to the big battery and fast, but not as fast as they used to be, charging options. There's nothing earth-shattering in either category. As with most phones that are this big, the Ultra lasts all day, and then some. Unless you're recording a ton of video, like I'm about to show you, in which case it'll hold up to about five hours of near-constant use at max brightness, recording 4K at 60 FPS. Now, most users won't be doing that, so most users can count on having a little over 50% left in the tank when they turn in after a 16-hour day, as I did on the night before this review went to production.